Welcome to Dr. Karen Health Talks. I'm Dr. Karen, and today we're going to talk about the thyroid. Listening to your thyroid, that beautiful little butterfly gland in your neck that you probably don't really know anything about unless something starts to happen. It's just amazing. It's a master gland in our body that we pretty much ignore until something happens. So listen to your thyroid is about this gland that controls nearly every aspect of our health. And we're going to talk about how it works and how to keep it healthy and the signs of what to look for when it's not working properly. So what does it actually do, this gland? Well, it controls our metabolism, our energy, our weight, our hair growth. So when it's not working properly, some of the things that you notice are your metabolism slows down and you probably gain weight. That's when it's it's an underactive thyroid. And what we're going to talk about is the underactive hype O thyroid and the overactive hype O thyroid, but more of that later. So the things to kind of look for, maybe your hair begins to break and thin. A lot of people notice changes in their hair. And the other thing they notice is intolerance of cold or heat. There's a laundry list of health issues that you definitely will notice once you pay attention of whether your thyroid is working or not. So let's talk about underactive thyroid, that's hypothyroid. That happens when the gland does not produce enough thyroid hormones. And the hypothyroid, the overactive, is when the gland produces too much. And you might be surprised to know that the NIH, the National Institute of Health, says hypothyroid affects about 5% of the U.S. population, whereas an overactive thyroid affects about 1%. And unfortunately, women are five to eight times more likely to have a thyroid issue than men. Yes, well, that's not fair. So there are several known causes of this underactive thyroid, uh, thyroid disease, and the big word that I talk about all the time, inflammation, autoimmune disorders, and iodine deficiency. And interestingly, that iodine deficiency has uh, pretty much been wiped out due to the use of iodized salt. But um, we still are a culture and a country that does have iodine deficiency. And uh, we can talk more about that. Uh, The origins of this overactive thyroid, uh, often called uh, Graves' disease, is one of the most uh, popular ones, an autoimmune condition. And then, of course, inflammation again. And then these benign thyroid tumors can also affect um, the thyroid gland. So... Unless you undergo actual thyroid screenings, one of the ways that you find out that you have thyroid issues is maybe a, uh, a doctor might say be looking at your neck, which hopefully they do examine your neck routinely, and they feel the thyroid. Or maybe a friend is noticing, well, gee, I noticed that there, you have that bulge in the front of your neck, or maybe you notice it, or you have some regular um, blood screenings for diabetes or some medical screenings for cardiovascular disease, and you notice that you have other issues of thyroid symptoms. So sometimes it just happens by chance, but the first first thing you might notice is a change in body weight, uh, as well as in intolerance to cold. You might get really fatigued. Uh, If you are menstruating, you have changes in your menstrual cycle, and a lot of times the first symptoms of the underactive thyroid is dry or brittle hair, or even hair loss. And certainly sleep disturbances are often a a sign of this uh, low thyroid. So on the other hand, the symptoms of an overactive thyroid are kind of the opposite, unexplained weight loss. And you often get a sensitivity to heat as as the opposite of the underactive thyroid is a sensitivity to cold. You just can't get warm. And for the overactive thyroid, 
is irritability because the thyroid gland, remember, is in charge of metabolism. So when you have an overactive thyroid, you can get heart palpitations. You can just feel really anxious because your heart rate is beating fast. And of course, the swelling in the neck is a critical indication of this enlarged thyroid, and it should be examined immediately and having some good blood tests. So I have an ebook all about the correct blood test for thyroid. And a lot of times doctors only test a blood marker called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And I'm here to tell you that that's not enough. That's a beginning, but that could be normal. And then these other markers like free T4, free T3 are not tested. And so you're getting hypothyroidism, but it's not being diagnosed properly. So if you're interested in that ebook on correct thyroid testing, just email me at email at drkarenwolf.org. I'd be happy to send it to you. And let's just talk about ways that you can invest in healthy thyroid health. Since I'm here to educate you about creating health, I'm not here to diagnose, treat, any kind of medical condition. I'm here as a health educator to help us be as healthy as we can. So one way to invest in your thyroid health, and I'm going to give you about seven different ways, is to make sure your iodine consumption is consistent with a good healthy thyroid. And the best way to do that is eating various dark green vegetables like kale. Don't you love kale? I love kale. I love making kale chips. So kale or broccoli or kelp or spinach, these are very high in the mineral iodine and they actually help your body with the creating T3 and T4. So you might need to supplement with iodine supplements, but that again would be something that you would talk to your healthcare provider about. The second one is the mineral selenium and zinc and a wholesome diet of uh, seafood such as salmon, sardines, shrimp, scallops. These do supply selenium. Chicken, beef, turkey also do, and guess what? Shiitake mushrooms, which have all kinds of beneficial um, minerals and vitamins. Shiitake mushrooms, yum. The third one is amino acid tyrosine. This is involved in thyroid hormone production and conversion. And you can certainly get good tyrosine by eating enough protein. So a lot of people are not eating enough protein in their diet. And I would say about 30% of your daily diet uh, would could be protein. And I recommend is protein. And then you get all the amino acids and tyrosine is one of those. The fourth one are B vitamins. So also important is to have various Bs. So you want a variety of B vitamins for your thyroid function and hormone regulation. And I always start with food first. So foods rich in all the B vitamins, such as nuts and yogurt, let's see, uh, fish and eggs, they're, they're high in B vitamins. So are seeds. I recommend taking a great high quality pharmaceutical grade multivitamin that has all of the B vitamins. In fact, they would also have the selenium and the zinc. And uh, if you want to know the one I recommend, just go to my website, drkarenwolf.org, and go to nutritional supplements, and you'll see the multivitamin called the Cell Essentials that I think is the highest grade one on the market. Number five, and guess what? Here comes vitamin D. D for dog. You know, I'm always talking about vitamin D. And vitamin D deficiency is associated with low thyroid. Another good reason to know your vitamin D blood level, which I'm always telling you, know your number. And I want it to be 60 or above, 60 or above. Sources of D are certainly the eggs and salmon and mushrooms. But most of us, like 95% of us, need a vitamin D supplement. And the typical range is somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 international units daily. It depends on what your D level is. You need to know your number. You can certainly go to vitamindcouncil.org website and find out information. Grassrootshealth.org also has a really good calculator that looks at what your vitamin D number is now and how much you need to supplement to get it up to that 60 range. And again, take a high quality vitamin D. Don't just get one off the shelf. 
When I travel, I take extra vitamin D for immune protection. Number six is probiotics. Guess what? Thyroid health is related, re- related to the microbes in your gut. Yes, your microbiome. So you want to take a probiotic. <laughs> Guess what? This shows up all the time, every time I speak about whatever topic. And I love the probiotic that is non-refrigerated. I take one every day. You can find out the one I recommend on my website, drkarenwolf.org, under nutritional supplements. You'll see the one I take. Or if you're on Instagram, just go to my Instagram bio, and in my link tree, you'll see the one I recommend and take. And number seven, certain plant extracts are really supportive of thyroid health, and one of them is ashwagandha. I know you know that name. It's becoming more and more popular and certainly has been shown to be have some help with uh, hypothyroidism. So I hope this has been helpful for you to just know your thyroid gland, that beautiful butterfly gland in your neck, and to start taking action to invest in your thyroid health. As usual, if you have any questions or comments about this topic or any others, or any topics you would like me to cover on my podcast, you can email me at email at drkarenwolf.org or go to my website, contact me there, drkarenwolf.org. And I'd be happy to record a podcast on your favorite topic. So until next time, this is Dr. Karen Wolf with Dr. Karen Wolf Health Talks. Thanks for listening.